All right, so ever since I started playing around with YouTube, one of my buddies has been giving me a hard time saying I need to do a toolbox tour. No, we're not doing your standard toolbox tour. Although we are going to go in one drawer here. So one of the things everybody loves about toolbox tours is you, you get to see all the tools everybody else is using, seeing, you know, specialty stuff. Lots of random pipe wrenches, miscellaneous measuring devices, you know, all the fun stuff that you either have and you like that your favorite guy has, stuff you wish you had, stuff you think you really need because that's going to get the job done. Now, I'm not one for a fancy box nor a super organized box. That's a John Deere one I picked up for 200 bucks. This is a Snap-on. This is a Master Series. I bought this for $2,000 brand new. Got a deal. It's packed. I don't have my key on me for this right now. It's somewhere in my mess of nonsense. Anyway. There's a couple tools I always keep around to remember how mechanics started. So this is the, if I remember right, the Greater Denver Plow Company. So way, way back in the day, you bought a plow, you bought an implement, you bought a tractor, whatever. This was your toolbox. This came with your piece of equipment. This was everything you needed to tighten and loosen the nuts and bolts on that thing. Uh, we've got here, we've got, this is actually just judging from how this was made. This was basically a hand machined adjustable wrench. And if you can see there, it's from the International Harvester Company. Not exactly high precision. Love it. Then you had some basic wrenches like that. Now think about the fact that the vast majority of the infrastructure of this country was built off of guys with these. I mean, this is not this is not any kind of tight fit. I've tried using these. These are these are sloppy as can be. So is this. So I wanted to take the time to have everybody realize that. The most important toolbox you have is one that everybody has. It's not a huge one, but it is one everybody has access to, and it's incredibly important. And that is information. So, yeah, service manuals, we got Honda, amp clamp stuff, whatever. I want to take a little time here just to come off to the side. If anybody doesn't know Sherlock Holmes... Think about it this way. Uh, we all want to learn from the first or the best. So you got your, uh, a lot of people say John Anello is the original mobile guy. Uh, a lot of, uh, John Thornton was basically the father of in-cylinder pressure transducer testing. Well, this guy right here, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the author, and this character Sherlock Holmes, this guy is the original diagnostician. Before that was a, a, a term, a name, a designation, this guy took on what a lot of these mobile guys and diagnosticians do. The problems nobody else could figure out, he took them on. Favorite book growing up, still is. I mean, you want, you want to learn something? Pick this up. This was actually uh, back a couple of years ago when everything kind of fell apart. I lost my, I had a first edition um, one of my customers was actually kind enough to give this to me for Christmas, uh, about a year ago. But anyway, between that and these four books here, these brought me to being a mechanic, uh, diagnostician, whatever you want to call me to begin with. These are excellent books. These are from England. Highly recommend them. But I mean, <clears throat> your most important toolbox is your information, be it YouTube, manuals, digital service information, whatever it may be. I mean, yeah, you got tools here. I got my old Varus there. I got a smoke machine. I mean, I got all sorts of fancy random stuff that I use on the day-to-day. -day. None of that would be any use without this. I mean, all right here, we got steam engine testing. Yes. I've worked on steam engines. Still do it from time to time. 
I mean, these are, I mean, they were doing right here. This is actually a mechanism that predates in cylinder pressure transducer usage. I mean, this was amazing what they came up with. We've got, I mean, the automobile encyclopedia from back in the day, 1918. I mean, you could go through there. I mean, we've got basic schematics. We have basic system operation, Delco regulation methods, cranking ops. I mean, anything you could imagine from back in the day, they had. And for a long time, especially when things went south, I didn't have the money to go to training. I know a lot of you guys are in that situation. I still really don't have the money to go to training like I would like to. But you know what? Public libraries, um, YouTube, bookstores, uh, yard sales, I mean, ignition timing and valve setting. This really hasn't changed in, I mean, since the dawn of the internal combustion engine. I mean, I was learning. I couldn't afford these classes. I couldn't afford to go to TST. I couldn't afford to, you know, take an ATG class if I could even get out of work. But, I mean, you go through here, make and break contact. I mean, all these old stuff here, Eubanks Hydraulics, this is from 18. 47 if I remember right the principles of hydraulics here are the same principle of hydraulics in modern manuals here um, Same principles here. I mean Bosch automotive handbook here the same stuff you're learning in which one's that the ninth edition So that's only a couple years old is all built off of stuff you can get for five dollars at a bookstore there is no excuse, no excuse not to continue training and learning and just, I mean, how engineers think. I think everybody will get a kick out of that. It's actually an excellent book. We all despise engineers at some point or another in our career. Read the book. You'll find it interesting. But, I mean, there is countless... Bits of knowledge out there. So if you can't afford to get to the training right now, there's resources. I mean, the, the guys on YouTube, like part one of this video said, the guys on YouTube are amazing. Diagnostic Network, uh, IATN. I, all, uh, I don't even know how many groups on Facebook there are that are constantly helping each other. It's all there. It's all available. It's all incredibly useful. And, I mean, then I do my own. You know, you find something you're interested in, start doing research. So we've got gasoline direct injection. I, uh, that's some other stuff I'm working on there, though. But, I mean, we've got that. We've got fluid power. We've got, you know, CAN bus. I mean, all this stuff is stuff I've ridden myself. I mean, I, I keep track of my case studies. Every day when you go into work, you're learning, and you may not even realize it. I mean, I keep keep track of my case studies to teach others to learn from. So, I'm already way over the magic five-minute mark. But remember, whole long and short of this is information in your brain is far more important, far more valuable than anything in here or in here, all right? All of this stuff can be replaced easily. You make more money, you get more. You get more of this, I mean these. Yeah, they're nice, but if you don't understand, if you don't understand the core principles and the operations and you know the base knowledge of everything, none of those tools are any good for you. So take the time, watch YouTube, go to the library, go to an old bookstore. I mean, believe me, there's the people who have this stuff. Ah, uh, just to break the point. These old repair manuals and all, you can learn a lot from them, learn basic operation. People give these away. And they're invaluable. So just keep your training up, keep working hard and make it through. I mean, we're all we're we're in a whole new age of technology here.
So there, there, there's no excuse anymore. We have access to the entire informational source of everything that's pretty much ever been written. You can get on the internet. So just keep advancing yourself. Keep working hard. Reach out to your fellow techs and learn something. And then when you learn something, do not keep it to yourself. Like I said, any of these are readily available. Don't lock the information up. Don't be scared that somebody else is going to come and take over what you're doing or make you obsolete. It's not the case. Share the information to help the techs grow because when you surround yourself with techs who are training and they learn, guess what? Now you get to learn from them. And it's a constant back and forth. We all benefit. We all get better. And it becomes an amazing thing. So that's my uh, part two. Most important toolbox you have. Keep learning. Keep training. Reach out. Use all available resources. I mean, that's, that's all there is to it. Oh, and most importantly, pick up Sherlock Holmes. Actually, the, uh, what he used to practice is what they called in the stories the science of deduction. Hence, the science of diagnostics. One of his best quotes, in my opinion, was when you eliminate the impossible, whatever else remains, no matter how ridiculous, must be the truth. Paraphrasing, and that's where my tagline, eliminate the impossible, came from. And I've carried that from a detective story and everything I do, be it tractors, automotive, whatever. It's a principle we can all live by. So that's all. Uh, hope you guys don't mind the ridiculously long videos, but enjoy the rest of your weekend. And remember to reach out and thank all your YouTubers who you're learning a lot from because it takes a lot of effort for them to do it and the information is invaluable. Have a good weekend.